was the last thing I was going to do. Are we ready? Okay, good morning, everybody. Jake Leotzko here. We are live this morning and we're going to be reading a very uh, difficult gospel um, passage today, but uh, we need to read and we need to understand <clears throat> the message that our Lord wants us to understand today. So kids, <clears throat> mind you, this is going to be a little tough to hear today, but uh, we need to hear it, okay? Here goes, from St. Luke, chapter 6, verses 20 to 26 in today's gospel. Raising his eyes towards his disciples, Jesus said. Okay? He was looking at his disciples. Remember how yesterday he had his disciples around him? right? How many disciples, by the way, did Jesus have? 72. 72 that were being counted, 72, right? Of course, those were the ones who were closest to him. And then among the 72, he picked how many? 12 okay so this must be the continuation of yesterday right and our lord was looking at his disciples and he was telling them blessed are you who are poor for the kingdom of god is yours blessed are you who are now hungry for you will be satisfied blessed are you who are now weeping for you will laugh blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude and insult you and denounce your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven, for their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. The gospel continues, but we'll cut it right there. One might think, right? How can it be that when people persecute you, this is what our Lord is talking here about persecution. How can it be that when people persecute you, you can be blessed? Just how, how in the world could that happen? Isn't our uh, reaction right away, uh, you know, one of aversion towards, towards persecution, right? When people, when people hate us, when people say all sorts of bad things about us, um, well, the, the, our natural tendency is is to be repulsive, is to is to reject that, is to is to say, well, wait a minute, why uh, I don't deserve this? Why are you doing this to me, right? Well, but you you see, our Lord Himself already warned us, and He said, no disciple is greater than his master, right? If they persecuted me, they will persecute you, and if we if we acceded to His call. Come, follow me, the same way that his 72 disciples and 12 apostles that he is still addressing up to now, up to today, from yesterday's gospel. Well, he addressed that invitation to them and to all of us, by the way. Come, follow me. Well, so if they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. Well, then, therefore, uh, we have to welcome the same fate that our Lord himself uh, suffered. And you see, folks, persecutions happen up to now. It wasn't only during the time of Jesus Christ when the, when the good people, the good people, the Pharisees, the scribes, see the Sadducees, they were supposed to be the good people. They were the caretakers of the law. They were the ones who were promoting the Jewish religion. They were the ones uh, making sure that people followed uh, the laws of God. Um, they were supposedly the good people, the knowledgeable people, the scholars of the law, yet they persecuted Jesus Christ. And guess what? Uh, it didn't end there, right? They killed Jesus, but it didn't end there. The persecution continued the first centuries of the church. The Romans uh, persecuted the Christians, and it hasn't ended up to now. It hasn't ended, folks. It has been going on all through these years, all through the centuries. We Christians and Catholics in particular are being persecuted and have been persecuted. That seems to be the lot of the church. Okay? And that is why, that is why uh, the, ground, the, 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 um, the field of the church, so to speak, 
um, has been has been watered by the blood of the martyrs. See, plenty of martyrs have shed their blood for Jesus Christ, and that is owing to the many persecutions that the church and the people of God have had all through the, the centuries. And persecutions happen up to now. Nowadays, we hear of ISIS, for one thing, persecuting the Christians in, uh, in uh, those other countries where uh, ISIS and uh, uh, militant uh, Islamic groups have been persecuting Christians. But we don't have to go that far, right? Even in our own country, even in our own land, persecution happens. How so? Well, through some political and economic means, right? We've been hearing about how uh, certain laws uh, against life, against marriage, uh, against uh, babies, right? Abortion, eh? God bless you, um, have, been, uh, have been happening not only in the United States, but all over the world. Eh? Up to now, Catholics are being persecuted for their beliefs. Catholics are being persecuted for their faith. And mind you, it is not even only on that general sphere. Eh? Many Catholics are even being persecuted where, in their own parishes, right in their own homes. <laughs> and uh, this is something that's very close to us. This, this thing of persecution is something uh, uh, close to home. Uh, my friends, and those of you who have been following uh, my posts on Facebook for the last uh, few months will understand what I mean here, right? Um, we too, on a very personal note, on a very personal level, have been experiencing plenty of persecution uh, right from our own environments here at home, right? Um, and just to give you a very few examples, um, you know, uh, we... <laughs> We have been ridiculed for kneeling down to receive communion. Okay? Uh, my own kids who serve Mass uh, uh, in the morning, uh, when they kneel down for uh, communion while everybody else is standing up beside them, uh, you know, the people, some people have found the issue with that. They even wrote the pastor and, uh, and asked that uh, my kids either be reprimanded for kneeling down or be banned from serving Mass. And uh, and indeed, uh, indeed, the pastor took action <laughs> on that on that complaint, right? Uh, when I was talking about the Eucharistic accidents that have been happening of late, right? What did I get? Well, all sorts of comments, all sorts of ridicule, all sorts of bad press. <laughs> put it that way, right? Uh, hey, and they even took me out of the uh, of my uh, assignment as a, as a catechist of the parish. See, uh, maybe as a, in an attempt to silence me, in an attempt to uh, to stop my having to bring about the issues related to the abuses uh, on of the on the Eucharist. So these things are happening every day: the persecution of Christians, the persecution of Catholics, the persecutions of people who abide by the truth, speak the truth, promote the truth, and uh, try to do good. And the persecutions don't have to, hap don't have to come from, from people with evil intentions. In fact, many of these people who persecute other Catholics and other Christians may very well be good people, good people, except that perhaps out of their own ignorance, they really don't know what they are doing. Out of their own zeal, uh, misplaced at that, they, they really don't know that uh, they're actually persecuting other people for uh, the wrong motives, for the wrong reasons. So, what do we do in this situation? What do we do in situations of persecution? It's not easy, right? It's not easy to deal with this. And, uh, well... Uh, what did our Lord say? Well, pray. He said, pray for those who persecute you. Right? In the same manner that our Lord, while he was hanging on the cross, what did he say? To, what, did he, what was his prayer? Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Right? He was praying for those people crucifying him. Forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. They think they are doing good. They think... They are doing a service to the people that they are serving, but when in fact they're not. 
right? So the same thing is true with us nowadays, from the political realm, from the economic realm, from even our workplaces, even the schools, right? Where they prohibit us to pray now and they prohibit everything about the exercise of religious freedom, right? Uh, and down to the parish level, we get persecuted everywhere. First thing we need to do as a good Catholic practice is pray for those who persecute you. Pray. That's the first act of charity. Our Lord invites us to extend charity to these people. Okay? And, 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 uh, and, uh, and, and, and the first act of charity is to pray for them. Okay? Number two, let us offer up these sufferings. You know, folks, and you know, kids, uh, our sufferings are not without value. Okay? Here is where uh, we Catholics in particular understand the value of sufferings where other Christians don't. See? Uh, uh, it, it is sad that other Christian denominations, they think that when Jesus Christ died on the cross, that was the end of it. That Christ died for all and that was it. Okay? Well, we Catholics understand differently. We understand that although Christ redeemed us on the cross... Redemption did not end there. See? Every, uh, I mean, every Catholic is invited by Christ to be a core redeemer with him. When he said, take up your cross and follow me. See, take up your cross and follow me. It is an invitation to be a core redeemer with Jesus Christ. We can offer up our sacrifices, our persecutions, our difficulties, unite them to Jesus Christ's suffering on the cross, okay? And we would have made good use of those persecutions and those sufferings. We could have become co-redeemers with Jesus Christ, right? So we, this is our Catholic recycling, you see, this is Catholic recycling at its best. You know, if we can recycle plastics and paper and everything else, put them back into good use instead of wasting them, well, we can recycle our persecutions, our sufferings, our difficulties of every day can be recycled and put into good use. This is the Catholic spirit, eh? That instead of lamenting the fact that we suffer here or we suffer there, lamenting the fact that people hate us or whatever it is, we put all of these difficult situations into good use. We recycle them by offering it up to Jesus Christ. With a simple act of offering, my Lord, I offer these things to you. My Lord, I'm, I'm being persecuted for, for trying to do good. My Lord, I'm trying to uh, do what your will uh, demands of me. And I'm trying to correct this or do that. But I'm being persecuted for it. I, I, I will connect this to you. I offer this to you, my Lord, uh, in order to, 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 to help you redeem souls. Not that Jesus Christ needs help, but no, but he invited us. He invited us, take up your cross and follow me. In the same way that Our Lady, uh, who appeared to the children of Fatima, invited the children of Fatima, offer more rosaries, offer more sacrifices for sinners. Well, we can do the same thing. And these persecutions that we suffer every day of our lives is precisely the material that our Lord Jesus Christ wants us to offer up and unite to his own sufferings. Okay? So first, pray for those who persecute you. Second, offer them up. Number three, smile for them. Smile for them. This is a time when we, the virtue of cheerfulness comes into good use. Okay? Let us smile for these people. Because it, smiling at them means interiorly, interiorly we forgive them. Okay? And exteriorly we show it to them. We show that we are not affected by these things. See? We show that although we might be suffering, yeah, it's difficult. I mean, we're not fools. It's difficult to suffer persecution, right? But if externally we can at least express the, 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 the charitable act of cheerfulness, then we, are, we, we have a way of easing the tension between us. And we have a way of showing the charity of Christ to these people. We want to show them we're not mad at you. Maybe you're doing these things out of a good intention, except that you may, there are certain things perhaps you're ignorant about, or for whatever reason, see? let's show them our love, our love for them. And the way to do that is to be cheerful externally. Show them through a cheerful disposition that 
that despite everything, you know, we want to be the image of Jesus Christ towards them. Okay? And um, where are we? Number three, number four. Let's be reminded of our confirmation. Folks, confirmation is the sacrament that helps us uh, be strong uh, 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 in our faith, right? It is, it is an added support from our, for our baptismal calling to defend the faith, to be strong in our faith in living it in the first place and to defend it when, when, uh, when there is need and, uh, and to promote the faith. Right? That is the sacrament of confirmation. And I'd like to invite everybody to read up on the sacrament of confession. It's all in the catechism. Okay? Huh? You said confirmation. Confirmation. It is all in the, uh, uh, in the catechism. Pick up your catechism book and you're going to learn how to live the virtue, I mean the uh, sacrament of confirmation better. And that way you know how to live up uh, uh, um, to, towards all of these persecutions that you may have every day. And remember what our Lord said in today's gospel. Your reward will be great in heaven. That is our hope. All the martyrs died for the faith with that hope that their reward will be great in heaven. Not that, not that they were just, uh, not that they were just after the reward. Uh, uh, no, that is not also the right spirit, right? But, you know, we are but human and we cannot uh, we cannot uh, disentangle ourselves from the thought of of a reward, the hope of a reward. And Jesus promised it already. So, hey, there's nothing wrong about hoping for that reward when we work for Jesus Christ. Let us offer these persecutions to our Lord. Uh, they may be big, they may be small, they may be, uh, you know, a, a passing comment from a colleague or, or uh, a, 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 you know, a commentary from another that is not uh, in keeping with our faith. It can be big, it can be small, we can die martyrs because of it, but we can also die as martyrs to our own ego every day with these persecutions, little or big. No matter what, we can do it for Jesus Christ. So remember, pray for those who persecute you. Offer it up to Jesus Christ. Smile for them. Remember your confirmation. Pray to the Holy Spirit when these things happen to you. Okay? And foster the hope. The hope. Keep the hope in mind. Your reward will be great in heaven. That's it for us, folks. Have a good day today. We are off to Mass. Have a blessed day, everybody. Today is the Feast of St. John Chrysostom, by the way. Bye-bye. Till tomorrow. Bye.